Hello and welcome to Tech Deals How To Guide, how to set up MSI Afterburner for overclocking your graphics card and or putting up that beautiful on-screen display that you see in many of my videos. You can also use this to benchmark your system as well with the average 1% and 0.1% low numbers you've also seen in my videos. In just a minute, I'm gonna go full screen and show you the download, setup, and installation of MSI Afterburner as well as Revia Tuner Statistics, how I set the configuration up to make it look like I do, how the benchmarking itself actually works, and then how to adjust the appearance of it, and then also how to overclock your graphics card. If you like this how-to guide, check the links in the video description below. There will be a link to a playlist with all of my how-to guides, how to install Windows 10, how to reformat your system, how to install an SSD. There's a bunch of how-to guides I've done over the years, and there's a playlist of those down below. You will also find the links to my Twitter, Twitch and Discord down below if you need some additional help. We have a great community of people on Discord. You can follow my deal tweets on Twitter and you can follow my live streams over on Twitch if you're interested. There's also other variety of links of ways to support down below, but for now, let's get to the guide. The first step is to download MSI Afterburner by going to the link I'll put down in the video description below. You're gonna scroll that page down until you see the option to download Afterburner. I personally use the beta. I've always had very good luck with it. It's your personal choice, but it does have some extra features for the newest cards. Once that's done, open it up. It'll be in your download folder. Extract it with your favorite zip extractor and then run the executable file that it produces. In this case, 4.6 beta 9, although the versions will vary over time. Once that's done, close that. Go ahead and hit next. There are two components in here that you need to install. Do not skip the Rivia Tuner Statistics Server if you want the on-screen display. That's what makes that happen. You have to install both of these. And I think that's probably one of the most common steps that's overlooked. People see that, they don't know what it is, and they go, well, I don't want to install extra things. And then they go, why doesn't my on-screen display work? This part here is the MSI Afterburner itself, and this is all you need to overclock your graphics card. You don't need the Rivia Tuner Statistics. There's the setup for it. If you just want to overclock, if you don't care about on-screen display, you can skip this part, but otherwise you do need to install it. And it's a separate program that sometimes will have separate updates itself when it launches. It'll occasionally pop up and say, there's an update to Rivia Tuner Statistics. Do you want to download it? And maybe you do, maybe you don't, depends upon uh, how new your graphics card is and whether or not there's new features out. But if you've seen some of my recent videos that show power draw and temps and clock speeds and other things, these are new features that they release on a regular basis. With all that done, yeah, we don't need to read the readme file, hit finish and it's all installed. Now this does not require reboot. You can run MSI Afterburner directly, although we'll want to reboot at some point here to get the, uh, once we get the on-screen display set up. I'm not going to cover everything here. That's the settings button. We'll come back to it. Clock speed and overclocking. We have an RX 580 installed AMD cards. You directly type in the clock speed. You can type in 1350, 1400, 1450, and then hit the apply button to apply. And you can also adjust the power level and some other features as well. NVIDIA cards use an offset. So it'll be plus 100, plus 150, plus 200 to the core clock and to the memory clock. They don't, they're not direct entry. Press this button here in the middle to reset everything back to stock. You do have to run MSI Afterburner at startup. There's a checkbox in here, start with Windows. If you want it to overclock your card every time you boot your system up, you can see the start with uh, Windows button right there. You need to do that if you want this running every time and you want your card overclocked. There are a number of different features here. You can unlock the voltage control. You can do some more advanced options. I personally do not recommend you mess with these unless you really know what you're doing. You can, but I think most people should. Voltage is what kills chips. Uh, these are all temperature protected. You're not going to damage them from temperature. I'd leave voltage alone. Unified GPU usage monitoring is for AMD cards. This will be great out for NVIDIA cards. Some NVIDIA, Some AMD cards do not properly report the GPU usage unless that's checked. Some don't, it depends. It's why the option is there. Here you can see there's some fan options. We're not gonna mess with those. Monitoring, this is where you do your on-screen display, but we're gonna jump to this. I wanna be able to turn my on-screen display on and off, so I'll set this up to a Control 12 F12 a key so that I can turn the on-screen display on and off as I'm playing. 
This is how we benchmark using the built-in benchmark. I've got it set up to control F10 and control F11 to begin and end the recording. I no longer use fraps for my benchmarking. I now use MSI Afterburner's built-in benchmark. There is a ton of stuff here. This is completely customizable. What I'm about to show you here is how I do it. If you've been wondering how in the world do I get all those names and all the customization set up in my MSI Afterburner overlay, this is how I do it. I'm not gonna verbally describe everything I'm doing. You can kind of see what I'm doing right here. When you rearrange these, you change the order they display. So for example, GPU usage is first. Normally GPU temperature is first. I like to see the usage, so I dragged it up. You just drag and drop the items. You can uncheck them if you don't want them monitored. You do have to click the show in on-screen display button. Most of these will be text, graph, or combo as an option. And then you can also choose override group name, as you can see I'm doing here. You can change around what they're called. So for example, this is an RX 580, and so I type in RX 580. It doesn't detect what car did it. That's not how those labels, normally it would just say CPU, GPU, RAM, etc. So that's how I get all those labels up there. And once or twice I've recorded benchmarks and changed cards and forgotten to change them. Um, usually I just retest it at that point, although it does happen and I've made notes and uh, corrections and edit in the past on those. Not very often, thankfully. This next bit right here, some people disagree with and they've asked me to change this. I'm not going to change it because it creates a cluttered, messy display that's hard to read unless you really are getting into the nitty gritty details. I understand why some people want it. I do turn on CPU usage, CPU temp, CPU clock, but I uncheck the individual cores. Some people like to see the individual cores being used, but it creates for just a ridiculously cluttered display. You can also do the individual uh, clocks as well to see the different clock speeds of the different cores. Now, when setting this up on your own machine, by all means, if you want to see them all, turn them all on. You can rearrange them. You can name them into groups, for example, if you like. But just keep in mind, it's going to end up being a lot of text on the display to update. It's not a huge load to your system or anything, but it just creates a cluttered display. You can see here, we've got the Ryzen 5 2600. This is the recent $1,000 sponsored gigabyte build with all the fancy RGB in the world. Not that I would necessarily build it quite that way myself, but it is in fact a very, very pretty machine. You can see I've got the 16 gigs of RAM there. And here's where we turn on frame rate. We drop this down, we change it to combo. That's what provides that graph so you can see the stability of frame rate as well. There's the frame time graph, and this is where we can put the average 1% low and 0.1% low on the screen so you can see them change in real time as we benchmark. Now, once we do all of this, it's going to give us an error and say it can't hook. It's got to restart. You have to restart MSI Afterburner after this because it's got, there's the message. You've got to restart it because it's trying to launch Radio Tuner Statistics and it's, that's how it's always been. So do that. It'll restart. I have sometimes found a reboot at this point is necessary. Depends upon the version. Um, in my opinion, with something like this that operates at such a core level, just give the system a reboot. And in fact, I ended up did rebooting it after making some further changes, which I'll trim out here in a second for speed purposes. But now that we've got Rivia Tuner Statistics properly running, we can minimize that and I can launch a game and show you what it looks like. The game I'm going to use is World of Warships. I am a World of Warships community contributor for Wargaming and I have played this game for two and a half years now and it is currently my favorite game to play. Both myself and my wife love playing it. It is free to play and frankly a ton of fun, but this isn't a review of this game so I won't mention it again, except to say that if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you will see the MSI Afterburner real-time numbers in really tiny text and it's not really visible and hard to use. I mean, you can set it to anything you want. The next thing to change is how this looks on the screen because that's ugly and small and frankly unreadable as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to exit the game and make some changes to Rivia Tuner Statistics, not MSI Afterburner, and we'll show you what a beautiful difference that makes. Actually, I minimized the game. You don't have to exit it. You come over here. This is the Rivia Tuner Statistics in the task tray. The first thing I'm going to do is change the font because that Unispace font is ugly as sin. Then we're going to change the color of the main text here. I always change it to that particular green. And then when we come back to World of Warships, notice what a beautiful difference it makes. This is actually readable. It is much larger, larger and covers more of the screen, but if you want to see what's going on and you want something larger, that's how you do it. Please note, change it to whatever color, size, font, whatever you want, rearrange it, put the gray box on, don't put the gray box on. 
This is meant to show you how to get to where I tested. And then of course you can take these settings and adjust it to your heart's content. And there you have it. That is the simple, straightforward way to overclock your car, to set up the on-screen display, and to configure some options. As I noted before, NVIDIA cards are an offset, so plus 100, plus 150, plus 200. AMD cards are a direct input. And then, of course, have it run with Windows each time if you want to keep that overclock. Now, there are more features and options with an MSI Afterburner than those that I showed you, but it kind of gets into the weeds at some point. That's a really good starting point, and hopefully that helps you set up your system and either put the beautiful display up, benchmark, or just overclock your card. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas for future how-to guides in the comments section down below. And as I said before, links in the video description. Please check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.